But it is okay. I bet it's she. Me, I cannot also live in lie. This is Jimmy Abdul's and Mahanga, my people are boom play. And I have a project out now. It's called Little Lagos EP. Go listen to that. Big love. So I did back you do it. I'm gonna get that cool do These girls don't show me bad. Good, thank you. It's good to be here with my Boomplay family. Happy to be here, finally. Is it finally you've been Yeah, you I've been looking forward to coming to Boomplay. I've wow. really been looking forward to it, but it's good to be here, finally. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. It's good to have you, guys. Yeah. So, um, you, your last single would be Joel, right? Joel. Yes, you did the, the African remixes. Yeah. So, how was that process? I know the first one was with Joe Boy and the Joe African Remixes pro um, project has been extremely insightful. I've learned so much from it and I think it's something I've always been interested in doing because I'm, I got a degree in international law and diplomacy way back when in university and I've always wanted to, you know, find a bridge for music and, you know, what the little I learned about the international community and this Joe African Remixes project was a good opportunity, you know, to reach out to people from other countries, know what they're listening to, know what styles of music they are doing, who's popping here, who's popping there, you know, what can I learn from this guy's sound, how can we collaborate? Some of those artists were really, really, really difficult, you know, to get on the same when you have a project like that with a lot of people from a lot of different countries, there's language barrier, there's time barrier, there's distance. My manager is having sleepless nights, calling this guy's manager and that guy's manager, putting the whole thing together. But all in all, there was so much learned from it. There's a lot of new fan bases um, gathered. Yeah. And there are, there are also a lot of places where we've had songs or things. We've had little activity here and there because we look at our stats. We look, oh, there's some little buzz here. There's a little bit of buzz here. How can we reach out? How can we, you know, take the next step? reach out to our fans in these places. And this project gave us a brilliant, brilliant platform to do that. So it's been good. So was there any point in time you had to like maybe leave the country to go with particular access to be able to... Uh, that's, that's the interesting thing about the 21st century that we are in right now. You know, the world has got to the point where you literally don't have to leave your house to work with anyone. You, you can literally reach out on social media, send your files via WeTransfer, you know, send files back and forth, you know, through platforms and everything. So um, it was less stressful. Would have liked to actually go out and actually create the songs, you know, create the content and everything. But obviously, we are in a post-COVID world, so you guys understand the technicalities of that. But it was still good all the same. So um, your last EP, your last project was in 2018, right? Yes. So why am I turning to another? Why start there? Is there something you're working in on or you just... Well, technically, the last official Jimmy Abdul's project was 2018. That was Jimmy of Lagos 2, yeah. the world. But still, we've been very busy since then. Um, you guys can check out the Chase EP. That's where I unveiled a couple of younger artists I've been developing and working closely with over the past couple of months. Oh, wow. So the Chase EP, that was early this year, January. And enjoy the African remixes. So though they are not the traditional Jimmy Abdul's projects that you would usually expect, you know, that those are still projects where you can still listen to my growth, you know, my inputs, either as a songwriter, as a producer, as a collaborator, anything you want to call it, there are still projects. But this year, this year, next month actually, we have a project coming up. It's called Little Lagos, the EP. It's four songs. You guys heard it here first. Okay. Yeah. So um, why that why Little Lagos. Yeah. Lagos is, it's not, Lagos is not large, but to some extent, it's here. It is large. Lagos, well, I mean, it's the most populous <laughs> black yeah, city so in the world. But Little Lagos, it's, it's a little bit paradoxical yeah. in meaning. It's, it's a paradox. But Little Lagos primarily is the name of my studio. Oh. So I, I, own, um, I own a franchise of studios called Little Lagos Studios. Um, my dream, my big dream is to set up studios all over the world where we can, you know, we can advance Nigerian music, we can advance African music, Little Lagos Studios. So that's, this, the project is actually named after my studio, Little Lagos. Wow. Yeah. So that's the capital. Yeah, it's, 
Lucy Lagos everywhere with me. That was like the most important thing to me. So Lucy Lagos is actually, his name of my studio is also the name of this phase of my musical journey. You know, there was the Jimmy of Lagos phase. I was known as Jimmy of Lagos. The things that mattered the most to me, the things I was singing about the music, the things that were influencing the music in Jimmy of Lagos, were things like O and Bear or lifestyle or going to the club and just things that like everybody in Lagos can relate to. So those are things in the first project, right? This little Lagos project is not as much about the city I'm in, you know, but it's about how it relates to my personal life. So this is little Lagos. This is my personal space and my view of everything. So you talked about um, developing new acts and also you talked about being a music producer. So how is that journey? Um, I guess you can call me Jim of all trades, but like personally, I'm, I'm I work many jobs in the music space, right? So apart from being the day-to-day -day pop star, some days I'm on producer mode, some days I'm on songwriter mode, some days I'm on artist development mode. Basically, I'm a very, very, very busy person, but within the music space, and I think one of the most important things I've learned is to balance and partition these things, you know. So I know the days when I'm supposed to be Jimmy Abdul's and the days I'm supposed to be Little Lagos Studios or the days I'm supposed to be Chase Music, you know. And each of them, they all have their own individual goals and plans. They don't particularly clash because, like I said, it's not like I'm doing many things. They're all things within the music space and they're things that feed and thrive off of each other. So look at this, for example, right? I have these artists I'm developing with Chase Music, right? but there's this Lego Studios. So that makes it easy, you know, to fund recording and creating music for these artists. They, it's kind of a, a triangle. It's a trilogy that feeds off of each other. So I'm not really like doing that many things, but it's, it's all within the music space. Interesting. Yeah. So um, you, you talked about studying Was that, has that always been the plan from the get-go? Well, so when we are younger, right, we have dreams, we have goals, aspirations, we have a lot of crazy things we want to do. And it's the job of our parents and guardians to make sure they trim that and send us a little bit in the right direction. So my parents weren't on the thing of don't do music or don't, you know, don't invest in this, your career, right? Yeah. Their condition was get a degree, get a good degree, get good grades. And you can do music, you can do whatever you want to do in this life. Just make sure you have that backing. And I can say confidently that I definitely see the impact and the difference of having that degree and the things you learn. University is not really about the things they told you about in international law or things they told you about in um, business administration. It's really about the maturity of your mind, you know. So I think those things I gathered from my time in university are still very, very, very instrumental to my music career. And, points to add or to note, while I was in university getting that degree, every day I would go to class, right, study, library, the regular, the regular. But when I get back to my hostel, I'm actually working on learning production. So I always tell people that I got two degrees, right, one official one and one unofficial one, unofficial one rather. So while I was learning international law and diplomacy, I was also sharpening my music skills, yeah. Interesting. So, um, how would you describe your style of music? Now, see where the question gets a little bit complicated because my style of music is, I'm, like I said, I'm a producer, I'm a songwriter, and I'm an artist. Um, that opens me up to more genres than I would like, more styles, more tempos, music from strange countries you've never heard because we always have to keep our ears on the ground yeah. listening for new inspirations so i can't really say that i have one sound but what i can say is that there is a mood to jimmy abdul's music right and that mood is nostalgia and that mood has only evolved over the years so the sound you can't really say the sound changes because there's really no one central sound i'm consciously studying and adapting new sounds together day in day out but it's evolved you know, as as a whole, it's evolved as a whole. So yeah, that's 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 about the sound. Yeah. So back to the Chase EP, are there any features on it? Okay, so the Chase EP has three artists um, and myself. Now these three artists, I put out a tweet sometime last year. Mm, I think it was the month of August, September. I put out a tweet 
right? I'm really all about younger artists because I know way back when, like I said, when I was in uni and stuff, I was really looking for some support of some sort, if, even if it was just to create the music, right? The music is why we're all here. Everything else follows. So sometime last year in September, I put out a tweet. I said, um, I know there is a young artist out there looking to kickstart their career. You probably don't have the means to record and all of that. I have Little Legal Studios. Send me your links, send me your videos, and anyone is good, I invite you over to my studio, and for the next few months, I will help you develop your sound with the resources in my studio, the producer, sound engineers on ground. So I put out that tweet, hundreds of responses, people sending links and everything, we sat down listening to everything, and I came across more than one artist that was like really talented, right? Came across two guys, two girls, I invited them to my studio different days. One of the girls didn't show up eventually, anyways, but the three that showed up, King Gemo, Mohaliza, Karen, talented, brilliant young artists, they came to the studio, recorded first official singles for them, and then the songs are so good, I'm looking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, how can I, you know, like, do a little bit more for these guys, get them a little bit further, because it's one thing to create the music, right? And then, what do you do with the music next? So I said, okay, I have a little bit of a platform, I know my own journey is still far, where Jimmy Abduz is going, is still a long journey, but for now, there are a couple of fans I've gathered over the years, I have fans in several universities, several countries, there are people listening to my music in the diaspora, locally, and that. What if these younger artists, right, could just, as a stepping stone, you know, feed off of that, just in this point in time, till I think they can find people, platform enough, to see people that would actually, you know, get them to the next level, invest in them, labels, distribution companies, sponsors, the likes. And it was really, really interesting. It was a really interesting process working with them over the past couple of months. So Feline, King Guillermo, Mohaliza. Feline is the girl in Chase Music, right? Remember, she's not the girl I mentioned initially that came from the tweets. I met Feline on my video shoot for Joe with Joe Boy and Oxlade. She was a video vixen in the video, and she's like, Yo, hey, Jimmy Abza, I can sing. Can I come to your studio? And I was like, um, yeah, okay. But I, was, I wasn't really sure at that point in time. I was like, she just said she can sing. We don't really know. So she comes by the studio, and then record some music for her and then I was like, yo, like, let's see what we can do in getting her music out there and her brand as well. So that's just what it is. Chase Music is just really artist development, really creates the music and help them find sponsors. Okay, so before Ch um, Chase Music comes, yeah. are you working, are you expecting anything from you? Well, the Chase EP came out in January. Oh, okay. Yes, so the next project now, like I said, is Little Lagos. Little Lagos, right. Yes. Yeah, Lagos. So, so Little Lagos is coming in August. August. August, yeah. So before then, are you, are you releasing any single from it? You know, I was in a meeting earlier today and my manager, my team, the distributors and everybody were actually um, looking at it if it's something, because it's a very brief project. So we're thinking, is there sense in pre-releasing something or we should just like, you know, just do everything at once. And then, so the rollout is still in structure, you know, the weeks leading up to the release, there's still some things that are not, you know, written in stone yet. but. Probably, maybe. I think personally, I'm feeling partial to like, you know, giving a preview before the product comes out. So on Little Lagos, are there any features? Little Lagos, there's one feature. Okay. Um, so it features, like I mentioned, King Gemo from Chase Music. Okay. Very, 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 very talented, versatile artist. Very, very macho sound. Really young guy, but very macho sound. So I featured him on a track with another artist called Martin Fields. Um, I think you know Martin Fields from um, Jennifer's Diaries. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, in the industry, rather. Industry. Yeah, it was industry. So, um, brilliant guys. Um, I have many, many songs in the pool. So, selecting the songs for the project was. was how, how can I say it was? Because we have many songs with big names, right? And ideally, you're just going to naturally and reflexively think, oh man, let me put the songs with big names. That's going to give me the most value, yeah. which is really smart and oftentimes true. But in this project, I was more about giving my best songs than big names. So yeah. we have just one collaboration, and it's that one. Okay. Soki. Okay. I know you've worked with Joe Boy, you've worked with Oxlade, you've worked with Yusuf. Yeah, YKB. So who are some of the other artists you've um, Over the course of my career, I've worked with many, many brilliant artists. It's, it almost gets difficult to say which is a favorite or but everything was unique. I've worked with um, Tenny, um, mostly as a songwriter. We have a record out, we put out way back when on that second EP, Jola 2. 
Tenny, Mio Kun, Damio Niru, Forsyth, um, and obviously my friends from the Joe Africa Remixes Project. I think that's my most interesting lineup of collaborations ever because um, all six songs, languages are totally different, you know, so um, that's the most interesting collaboration, but I've worked with quite a couple of people.